Let's go to, to John chapter 8. We'll see what Jesus has got to say here and now. John chapter 8. Verse 31. In verse 32. Jesus said, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. Now, listen, Kenneth. He didn't say again, Brenda, to these people that partly believe on me, just like he said, My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge, Deb. He said, this is to people that believe, that believe on me. That believe on me. He said, he's a talking to the people here that believe on him. If you continue in my word or in my knowledge, if you'll continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. If you flip the coin over on the other side, that means that if you don't continue in the word of God, then you'll be like what we read back here in Hosea verse 6. You forget the law of God and then he'll forget you. Or if I get forget the law of God, he'll forget me. These people here believed on Jesus and he told them, he said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. What have you got to do to be free? Huh? The first thing, you've got to continue in God's Word, don't you? Yeah. got to continue in it. Oh, I've read it. I read it all the way through one winter when, I, winter when I wrecked my motorcycle and broke my leg and I couldn't get out. I read the whole Bible all the way through. Doesn't know all about it. Continue in it. Continue in it. When you continue in the law or the Word of God... You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now, how will the truth make you free? It'll only make you free if you continue in the Word. And you've got to have the knowledge of God's Word or the knowledge of the truth before we can be free, don't we? Amen? Amen. Let's go to Psalms chapter 17. Verses 3 and 4. Yes, sir. I love the word. Amen. Great. Psalms chapter 17. Verses 3 and 4. Now pay close attention to this. Listen to this. David said here, Thou hast proved my heart. Thou hast proved my heart. Yeah, yeah. Thou hast visited me in the night, and thou hast tried me, and shall find nothing. I am purposed. I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. Amen. Everybody will. Let's 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 say I'm happy. I am I'm happy. I'm happy. Are you? I'm happy. Real happy. I mean, ain't it good to be able to say I purposed that my mouth is not going to transgress? How are we going to get anything out of this thing? Deb, God made everything that we see from words. Everything. He hung all the the universe that we look at, the stars and the planets, he hung them out there, flung them out there, spoke them into existence by his words. Ain't it in Galatians chapter 5, Brenda, that it says that we're supposed to be imitators or mimickers of God like a child would his parent? As dear children. What are we supposed to do about this word? What are we going to do about it? <laughs> We've got to continue in it if we're going to be a, a follower of his. Right, we're going to have to not forget it or he'll forget us. 
And we're going to be destroyed if we don't get the knowledge of it. So what we're going to do, David said here that God, and he was saying this very, very pleasing. He said, thou hast proved my heart. You've proved my spirit, God. You've visited me in the night and you've tried me and you will find nothing. I am purposed that my mouth will not transgress. Words. God made its words and Herb King and all of us here, we're going to have to start speaking his word out of our mouth and letting his word be a mirror to how we operate and a very blueprint and a duplicate or either we're not going to operate successful here the way we should as his people. Right, brother. David said, I have purposed that my mouth ain't going to transgress. 